Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we're asking the question, do we like getting recognized in public? Hmm. But before we get into that discussion, we wanna let you know that we are going on tour and we're gonna announce all the dates was, for the rest of- weird, of you, the way you said tour. 2019, I wanna make it, make it clear. Tour. That this is it, guys. These are the only dates for 2019. This may be the only dates for some time, okay? We don't know if we're gonna be going out again in 2020, we don't know. So uh, this might be your last chance definitely to see this show, A Night of Music and Comedy. We're gonna be in Las Vegas on June 21st, Salt Lake City on June 22nd, Denver on June 23rd, Milwaukee on the 25th, Indianapolis on the 26th, Detroit on the 27th, Omaha on the 29th and Minneapolis on the 30th. So that's wow. coming up, that's coming up end of June. All right, and then I got some fall dates uh, starting September 4th. We're gonna be on, Hu on Houston. We're gonna be on yeah, Houston, we are Texas. coming on Houston. September 4th, New Orleans, September 5th, Birmingham, Alabama, September 6th, Jacksonville, Florida, September 7th, Tampa, Florida, September 8th. Then skipping down to the end of November. Albuquerque, New Mexico, November 20th, Phoenix, 21st, Sacramento, California, November 22nd, and Valley Center, California. The at center of the valley. Harris Resort on November 23rd. Rettenlinklive.com, get your tickets. I, I wanna get an update, and I, I've kinda gotten the update. I want you to give the listener an update on your mimic diet thing, cause I, mm -hmm. I you know, anytime you do like a, a what I'll call an experiment on yourself. I don't know how you would describe it. Um, I would describe it as a failed experiment. Oh, okay, especially if it's a failure, I wanna hear about it. I want them to hear about it. I wanna hear about it twice, I'll put it to you that way. Okay, <laughs> quick refresh, it was a uh, a diet designed by a professor uh, who got together with the people at the Anti-Aging Institute or something that's named something like that. Um, and created a diet that tricks your body into thinking that it's fasting. So you get the benefits, the physiological benefits of fasting uh, without going on completely nothing. But it's for me, for a big, for a big man <laughs> like me. What happened? I'm just, I'm just adding to the uh, big man montage. Um, 700 calories is not a lot. So uh, I lost nine pounds, which not hard to do when you're as big as I am. Uh, but I actually had the benefit of- How much di did you weigh? Uh, I was probably like 215 but when, I, when I started. Okay. Uh, and I, the reason I know exactly how much I lost and the composition of what I lost is because I did that thing they have at my gym called the in body where you get up there and you hold the thing and it gives a very <laughs> specific analysis of your, I don't, I mean, I trust that it's accurate. I, there's one in my gym too. You stand on the thing, you stand on the thing barefoot. Yeah. And then you hold these things on your thumbs and you hold your arms out like that. Yeah. And you don't move. And then it gives you like, this is how much muscle you have in your right arm and your left arm and all, yeah. And then it gives you your BMI and all that. So before, so I, I, I it just happened that I did it right before and after and we were looking at it and my trainer was like, you lost nine pounds. And then she was like, um, six pounds of water. <laughs> Dang, uh, That's, that doesn't sound like the right thing to lose. Two pounds of muscle. Oh, okay. And one pound of fat. Yeah. So mission not, not accomplished. Good. Not good. I, I lost more of what I want, less of what I don't want. And, well, I, and I want water. And now she was, yeah. she, she, it wasn't that I had dehydrated myself, it was something about the fact that your nutrients enable mu water intake into your muscles or whatever. But the thing that I also noticed is that, you know, I have all kinds of issues with my back, like all up and down the spine and like muscle stuff that happens because of weird things in my discs and all that got exacerbated to the mm -hmm. point that like it was tightening up because your body needs stuff, it needs nutrients, and especially if you've got like, you're kinda borderline about to go into like a muscle spasm at any moment. And so, it. but uh, after a week of just regular eating, 
everything is back to normal. You gained nine pounds? Well, I haven't done that. I'm just saying that like okay. I feel good again. My back is 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 good. So are you, are you doing? Are you still doing intermittent fasting? Yeah, I'm still doing that because that just is not that a may, diet. That, that may, is a just a it's a lifestyle. Well, some people are, are like, we don't promote diets, especially ones that don't work. Yeah, and the fasting I was, thing. I was I was reading the that fasting feedback. wasn't a diet, so, so to, it was a it was a fasting period for very specific reasons, and it wasn't so it wasn't so I could lose weight. That wasn't why I was doing it. I'm doing it because I wanted to have something that I could go back to on like a quarterly basis. If it did have good results in those in those numbers, then it would I'd do it again. But it, so you do recommend it, and you yeah, highly use um code ear to lose nine pounds of the wrong stuff. Well, uh, yeah, you can. You, if we you shouldn't want, be throwing our coupon code for like bunk. If things. you want to lose one pound of fat and eight pounds of muscle and water, <laughs> oh gosh, you've got too much water and muscles. <laughs> Don't use code. You know who here. you are. <laughs> too much muscle and water. Um, yeah, so we're gonna. T uh, well, first of all, I got a cold. Like I'm three days into this thing. Yeah, <clears throat> I actually it's don't a pet, breathe on me. It's a pet peeve of mine. This is a bad time to get a cold. This is a tough time to get a cold. What do you mean? Transitioning from spring to summer, it's just it oh. makes you it makes you feel like you're out of sync with with, with nature. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be good in about two days because I've been doing this thing called the mimic diet, mimic oh, fasting that, diet. It's I've been called doing that. The, uh, so that's different than the fasting mimicking diet. Oh, uh, <laughs> it must be a different. I've not maybe, been doing maybe anything. Maybe you'll gain muscle now. Except on that trying one. to nap. It's a pet peeve of mine for podcasters to like go on and on about how their voice is different and like apologizing about how they're sick. I think it's good to but acknowledge. I just want so. to acknowledge it. Got some Kleenex down here. But yeah, we're gonna talk about um, a, a question that we get often, I think when we're being recognized, at least I know I do, is do you get recognized often? And I think the implied follow-up question is how do you feel about that or this as it's happening? So, um, and I also think that people want to know if they are the, the like a special source of something. Like maybe he doesn't get recognized that often, right. and I've made his week. So I want to get into that, but I, something happened to me that I wanted. I've been saving this story to share with you and you, and you too, Jacob. I was pointing at the uh, at the camera, which represents one loyal listener, but then, you know, but also Jacob out of the corner of his eye, he saw me point. Now I am pointing at you. That's, that's what it feels like for me to point at you. Incidentally, pointing is a part of this story. Oh gosh, this um, is not good. It's fine. Um, th this happened in the context of when we were taking care of my father-in-law, Lewis, <laughs> at the hospital, and I took a break and I came home and I was exhausted and I, you know, I was gonna take a nap, but then I was like, you know what? It would be therapeutic for me to walk the dog and I'm gonna make Lily come with me. So uh, come along so that I can spend some time with her because I just wasn't seeing the kids as much in, in that phase of uh, caring for him in the hospital. Right. So we went out for a walk um, and we're, we're walking down the street and I'm, I remember the doggy bags. A lot of times I don't remember the doggy bags. I'm glad I did because. Oh, and when you don't, what do you do? Um, I'll use like a, if Jade poops, I'll use like a. A leaf? I'll find a big leaf and use it as like a glove and then I'll just throw it all into the woods. What woods? Well the, the woods like on my walk, like trees. Not someone's front yard. There's, there's not a lot of woods where we could <laughs> around here. So you're throwing it onto somebody's property, well, man. There, I mean there are trees in like little wooded areas, like unmowed just areas of people's yards. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, people's <laughs> yards. <laughs> okay, but the wooded parts of people's yards that they never go into. The thing about Jade is she likes to, like we'll be walking all of a sudden, I realize, oh, the leash is getting taut and I'll look back there and she's popping a squat in the middle of the street. Yeah, Barbara does the same like, thing. Like she doesn't go to the grass in somebody's yard, she's very respectful of that. She she goes to the, like not even in, on the lane of the street where she's walking like on the edge, she'll like go to the middle of the road and like, yeah, she I wanna have to a, know. I wanna have a wide berth as I, I That's funny because Barbara, birth Barbara does the same poop. thing and I always thought that that was, I, do, I was doing something wrong like, it just, she's stupid, like she's not, she doesn't understand. We never told her that she shouldn't do that. That, that yeah, it feels more natural to do it on the grass or some dirt. But it's easier to clean up when it's on the concrete. I like, 
I like to like throw some dirt or some leaves on it before I pick it up. So I do not like it being on the dirt. I don't like just grabbing. You're like I'm, Mr. Leon throwing sawdust on vomit. Yeah, he was the janitor at our, our, our at Bowie's Creek Elementary. Um, May he rest in peace. Great man. So anyway, she pops a squat in the middle of the street and I'm like, you know, then I'm cleaning it up with the bag. You know, you put your hand, you know how to do this. You put your hand in the bag, then you grab it and then you turn it around in your hand. But it still is really bothersome to me. It's not like. So warm. It's so warm and I yeah. feel like it's coming through this bag in some way. And that's why well, I like it to It probably is a little bit. Nature sawdust, like whatever I can find, I like try to let that. Some mulch from somebody's yard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just, yeah, a little bit of mulch. Yeah, I, they don't need this. Yeah, have you seen me do this? <laughs> Yeah, you're act the way you, the the objects in your story as 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 if you're on a hike in Yosemite, but really right. you're in the suburbs of Los Angeles <laughs> where there's no woods. It's just trees in people's yards and the mulch that they have so carefully arranged, and you're using it. I don't miss a little as bit sawdust. So then I'm carrying this bag around, and we turn the corner and we're going up the street. And I, you know, I will say at this point because this is the point of the street where it usually happens. Um, there's this car that's typically parked there that has a vanity license plate. You know me and my bumper stumpers, I've, I always notice the vanity license plates. And there's um, there's a license plate that says Mr. Noodle, oh. which um, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Noodle is a live action uh, mime character in Elmo's World, the Sesame Street series. And he was kinda like a clown without makeup, he would do like clownish things. And, uh, and then there, Mr. Noodle had a brother, Mr. Noodle. And like Elmo would voice over this whole like Mr. Noodle. You remember, you know Mr. Noodle, right? Never watched it. Lily was really into Elmo. I think um, Lincoln was too. I saw, I saw the controversy coming and never let my kids, I just sensed it, never let them, let them watch it. Oh. I separate the man from the puppet. Well and, that's and a Mr. difficult thing to do when his hand is in it. <laughs> it, pretty, it, pretty, it pretty much becomes a dead Elmo when you take him out of the. <laughs> Okay, good point. I have no response to that. <laughs> I'm just going I'm not even going to tell my story now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I I will clarify that there are no controversies that I know of associated with Mr. Noodle or his brother Mr. Noodle. <laughs> even though with that name you would think there would be. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if anybody's problematic, it's probably Mr. Noodle. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, the Mr. Noodle's brother Mr. Noodle was played by the guy from uh, Evening Shade. Who, oh, I love that guy. Uh, who was also in the Green Mile. Oh yeah, But I can't great. be more specific about what his name is. But anyway. Must, mustache. So there's license plate, Mr. Noodle, and then sometimes, but on a rarer occasion, I'll see another car, and it says, the license plate says, Dr. Noodle. I'm like, oh, there's a family of noodles that live around here. What? And for so for like two years, I've seen these vanity license plates. And so it's just a part of my life. And like sometimes we'll you know we'll point it out. There's there's Mr. Noodles parked there again. <clears throat> so I'm walking. That's just a little background. So we're walking now. I've got this poop bag in my hand. And Lily and I are walking. We're we're I'm I'm catching her up on the situation at the hospital and everything. We're having a great conversation, but I'm bothered by the fact that I haven't even completed thirty percent of this uh, dog walk, and I'm already holding poop in a bag. I do not like mm. being that guy. Like. I judge heavily the people I see walking their dog with like a big sack of poop in their hand. It's right. just like. You gotta offload that. What a loser. But I also, I hate seeing poop bags just laying around. It's like, we are, we are humans, you know? We're at a point on the food chain where we need to love our earth to the point where we can't just throw plastic poop bags down just because of pride. Do you see people throw plastic poop bags down? Not, I, I, I see them laying down. I see evidence that they've been left places. Like when you go on hikes around LA, there's people who will like drop their poop bag. And you know what they're thinking? They're thinking, I hate walking around with a poop bag. When I come back down the trail, I'll pick it up and throw it away. No, and you when, don't. And then when they see it, they're like, well, that could be anybody's poop it's bag not now. Mine. <laughs> oh yeah, you conveniently forget about it. Yeah. I don't wanna be that guy, so I'm in a catch-22 situation. So I tell Lily, I'm like, Lily. When I spot a trash can, yeah. we're gonna get rid of this thing. Now, the trash had come recently, so mo it wasn't like all everyone's trash cans were out. But there are the, the stragglers. There's some stragglers and you're looking for that. One out of 10. So I'm like, we're looking for stragglers, we round this corner and go down this other dead end street. 
I'm talking to her like this, and she's like looking at me like, are you okay? And let me say before you before you proceed, I believe in this. I'll just I'll just say that I believe in what you're about to do. Here's what I believe in. Okay, I'm like because it's a, it, we're we're all humans. It's pu- it's a public service. Yes, it's your trash can, but I'm not changing the dynamics of your trash. You know, I'm not throwing a chair in there. You know what I'm saying? Or a it's dead a, body. It's a bag of poop. It doesn't change anything. You should be okay with it. If it, if when you're th- if you didn't subject. Pay. Okay, I, I'm glad you're backing me up. But subject to some specific key points that I believe and that I wanted to relay to Lily because I needed her help. I think the first thing is you got to pick the right trash can. There's a green one for oh, of course. There's gotta, a blue one for recycling. There's a black one, and I'm like Lily, look up there. I see some stragglers. There's three trash cans. What I want you to do, and this is my second point, is You're making your daughter do it. I want we got to. The second point is we got to be clandestine. Well, you we got to be, be. You got to be sneaky. Even though I completely sneaky. believe in it, you still got to be sneaky. Because you never about it. know how the person is going to feel looking out their window and seeing somebody open their trash can and make a little deposit. Yeah. You don't know if they're going to run out with some sort of a firearm or at least I doubt that would happen. Armed to the gills with insults. That could happen. You know, in front of my daughter and my beloved beast. Because I will say that if I saw it happen. You'd be mad. You would feel anger instinctively. But I wouldn't say anything because I'd be like, you know what? For all the reasons I just said. But I understand. But your heart rate would go up and the you, tendency you'd to have be to do pr- some breathing. The tendency to be protective of your trash, I get it. It's I your understand. domain. It's not logical, but I get it. So I'm like, Lily, we're, I want, we're gonna subtly scoot over to the left side of the road. As we're walking, we're not gonna stop walking. I want you to go up to the trash can. I want you to gently lift the lid like three inches. All right, you don't have to open it all the way. I'm talking to her this way. This is maybe over instruction, but okay. I'm like, I just want you to just give me a little poop bag gap. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna swoop in, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw it in there, and then you Hold just on. gently let go. You made this a two-person job? It needs to be a two-person job. I, I'm if, holding, I, if I was there, I would've been like, this listen, is a bad idea. Listen, you short-sighted amateur. <laughs> I'm I'm walking a dog with a leash in one hand. I got poop in a bag in the other hand, and I got a daughter with two free hands. Like I got to teach her the ways, man. This is this is a teachable moment. I this w- is less about what I need and more about what she needs. I would give her the poop and let her do the whole shebang. That's just what I would have done. Well, that's because you're two hands. A, you're a cruel, unfeeling father. Lift with one, deposit I, with the other, and she's also a young woman, I lead which by I example. think gives her. She's gonna get a little more leeway. They're gonna be a little bit less likely to come out cussing or for the firearm. A little less like, so there's still a likelihood that your daughter could be blasted with poop bag insults. And hey, if you're fine with that, you, your daughter can be well, thrown to the wolves. Then she could be taught a lesson. Then that would be the lesson. How do you deal with that? So I'm like, I just need three inches and three seconds and I'll take care of the rest. And she's like, Dad, this isn't a heist. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm with her. I'm like, just, just go, go away. we're almost there. Just don't, just just do the plan. And I'm talking like this now. And you probably look suspicious. And at the, the la- and then she she grabs the green. No wrong I'm one. Like, no, 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 you gotta go with the black one. You gotta go with the black. One. And then she like, she get, she she gives me three inches on the black one, and I just make the deposit. And then. Whew, we, we immediately swing back over to the other side of the road and I'm like, yes. I think I literally out loud said yes. Yeah. And at that moment I looked up and I saw a car with a person inside of it and the door was open. I was like, oh crap, there's, there's somebody there. I think they saw us. And then I'm like, oh, nope, he didn't see us. He was, he was like in his car detailing his dash. But he was the owner of the trash can. He was on the same side of the trash can. He, ve- I would say most likely the man in the car cleaning the dash was the owner of the three trash cans. Yes. Mm-hmm. I panicked for a moment. But te- as I said, stated before, not really the owner. They're on loan from the, from the city. He's renting it. Yeah, so I mean, we're all, we're all paying for Put it. Put yourself in his shoes, Rhett. I was a bit afraid until I realized, and I told Lily, he didn't see it. He didn't see anything. We succeeded. We are amazing. You know what, I hope Jade craps again. Right now, so we can just do it again. It was exhilarating. It was like on the edge. The dude was like 
rubbing his dash down with like some armor all situation. Yeah. He was like he was like me like when I first got my 1987 Nissan pickup and I thought that I was gonna wax it and it was already so old that when I waxed it like it basically just took the paint off you of it. You saw like chrome underneath yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> like, like sheer metal. The dude was going at it. He never looked up. I was like, oh, that's your fault, man. You're too into your dash to see who's making the stash in your okay. can. What happened though? Okay, yeah, I should get on with this story. So I walk by and we go all the way to the end of the road and the, but then we have to turn around and we're walking back and I'm like, oh, the guy's still there. And then I notice from this new vantage point, I can see the license plate on the car and it says Dr. Noodle. Oh gosh. So then without saying anything to Lily, as, I'm, as we're walking by, Again, his door's open, one foot's out, and he's still on that dash, just grinding it. It's just like. It's a dirty dash. <laughs> it was a shiny dash by this point. Uh, we get up next to him, and I'm probably as far from here to that wall, so like, I don't know, seven feet away. And at that point, without really planning out what I'm gonna do, I just went with the feeling. Mm. I, I, you know, I was, I, was feeling, I was feeling on top of the world after what had happened. And I, I point at him and I say, you must be Dr. Noodle. And, and he, he looks up from his dash and the look on his face went from surprise, someone speaking to me to like jaw dropping amazement. And he says, you know me? <laughs> and then before I could say anything in response, he said, I know you too. <laughs> and, I, and I never stopped walking. Uh, what? I never stopped walking and I said, cool man. You have a good day. Oh gosh, man! And then, such a moron. And, and then, <laughs> then Lily leans over. Oh gosh! As we're still walking, she leans. You were over. afraid of him because of what you had done. That's Li why you didn't stop. Lily leaned over and she said, "What's happening?" <laughs> I was like, "You're." Yeah. I was like, "We just met Doctor Noodle." That's what's happening. Then we walked around the corner. Well, who the hell is Doctor Noodle? Well, he. I don't know. He's that guy. But here's the thing, he had this amazing look on his face and it was as if I had gone up to Clark Kent on the streets of Metropolis with his glasses on and I said, you must be Superman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like, it was one of those, oh, you, you know me? It was like, what? It, it's like when someone has a name tag on and they forget and you think you're cute because you're like, Steve, what's up? And they're like, oh, you know me, you right? Know, it's like, but people don't typically say, "You know me." But then he also he, he but you know he also knew me. Since then, though, I guess from the internet. Since then, he has realized why you said that. I walked I around. The, what do you mean? Because of his he license plate. He saw the plate. license plate. Yeah, I mean, he he realized he was like, How did, "Oh," but yeah. he did know me. I guess from why did you know uh, you did you didn't stop internet. subconsciously because I was, of I was poop. walking a dog I wasn't standing mm -hmm. a dog you did you may not even realize why you didn't stop you didn't stop because of you felt guilt over the poop we walked around the corner and guess what we saw we saw in the other car and from that vantage point it said Mr. Noodle and we were like look Lily one down one to go one day we might just get to meet hold on, Mr. It's Noodle hold on it's the same same house right yeah but I I'd like to think there's a doctor and a Mr. Noodle living there there's two cars. But you met the doctor. I met the doctor. I'm just really interested in, I don't, who's doc, he, he obviously does something. I think he's a dash doctor. He's a car doctor. Update to the story, just to provide a little color commentary. You, what I'm saying is you could have found out by just stopping. I didn't wanna have a conversation, Rhett. I was just being nice. I, I think I made his day. Okay. Maybe he made yours through that story. Uh, I was walking, Jade yesterday and I walked past uh, Dr. Noodle and dad gum if he wasn't out there again, second time and guess what he was doing? He had the hood open of the same car. He's and cleaning the engine? He was, he was cleaning the engine. Yeah, he's getting ready to, with sell, a, he's getting ready to sell that car because cleaning the engine doesn't do anything except make people think that your car is cool. 
You know what I'm saying? I think. I think Look how clean this engine is. <laughs> I think he just it's has gonna an go obsession, another ten thousand miles. He's a shine doctor. He's a doctor of car shine. You know me. What kind of car is it? I know you too. Is it like a car that he was would like take an, to a car it show? Like a, it was like an Accord. <laughs> yeah, he's going to the Accord car show. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he he recognized me, and I will say. That's probably the most enjoyment I've ever had about over being recognized, spoiler alert. Oh, it's all downhill from there. Well. In the negative sense. Maybe, maybe not, because I, I don't want to be negative about being recognized, but, but let's, we, so let's well, wrestle well, you with You know that. what, we're, not, we're gonna be honest about being recognized, uh, but first, we're gonna let you know that you can get a snote book or two. Oh, dramatic, dramatic leaning inwards. Here you got here you got the good mythical snote book. It's a uh, a notebook and a sketchbook in one. And this is just the mythical snote book. Blank pages, tabla rosa, just like my brain. Now this one, uh, I was told not to open it up because uh, and show you because it's from Zach. But I'm just going to read a little bit of Zach's diary. Oh gosh! No, there's nothing in there. Um, People so there's actually, nothing in there, it was just a test. People actually, no, he, I mean, there's like something at the beginning, but I'm not gonna look at it or read it. It was just a bit. Um, this, th wasn't this designed by our very own Caitlin? Yeah. She drew, she, she draws this on every single one. Every single one is hand drawn. It's quite a deal. No, she hand drew it once and then uh, we printed it on all the rest of them. So record your thoughts, your feelings, and your life with a snote book at mythical.snore. Snore. snore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a sleep study going. Yeah. Sign up for the mythical sleep study. Mythical.snore. Hope, hopefully snore. this podcast is not a sleep study. Do I have a uh, Kleenex or snot on my face? Hey, you got, yeah, you got some here, right? kinda, kinda, yeah, but don't, I mean, you know, don't, do don't dash it. Don't do it like Dr. Noodle rubs his dash because eventually it'll turn red. You don't wanna overdo it. Just put some armor all, armor all on there. Protect yourself. Is it gone? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to explore the the dynamic. We've you know we talked about this from time to time. If you if you've listened to the show for a, a, a while, you know that we talk we tell a story or two about being recognized in certain places and what we said and what the person said. Uh, we might retread a few of those, but we're doing it in the context of answering this question of like what does it what does it do for us like mentally emotionally. What is it like to be to to be recognized in public? How do we deal with it? What do we think about it? And this could come across as a little bit like uh, self-aggrandizing. I think is the word that you used when we were thinking about doing this. Yeah, when I pitched the topic, I podcast. was like, "Let's do something self-aggrandizing." Yeah, you know, like talk about get how often we're recognized. Yeah, but uh, we're doing it in a, in the because we we have this conversation, and I think that because. Uh, you, you listener, are, are perhaps the kind of person that if you saw us in public, you might feel like you had to doctor noodle us. And uh, <laughs> if you, if you, if you do, uh, then this might give a little perspective. And uh, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't. We, there's no agenda. We, I, we're not like trying to land at some sort of like public recognition ethic or anything. Maybe we will by the end of this. I, but I, I have I have a little story that I can start with that happened uh, recently, and uh, I think it kind of feeds into a part of my perspective on this, and that is, um, I think part of the positive for me, and this is just a totally selfish positive, is that there are times that I am with someone might be my family, it might be friends, and getting recognized when I'm with someone, you know, it gives you this little like, hey, yeah, I got recognized. You know what I'm saying? Like you, 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 yeah. you it's, it's, it, it, it's the sort of the self-centered, egotistical part of me responds to the fact that, hey, I was in a group of people and I got recognized. And then there's a, and then when you're with your family, Some, someone that you care about their opinion of you, right? And then you know, like if I'm with like my my mom gets such, such a kick out of it, right? Like my mom will introduce herself, my mom will be in a conversation with somebody in public, and then just in the middle of the conversation, just throw out, "Do you know Rhett and Link?" Just so then she could be like, "Well, Rhett's my son," <laughs> right? You know. So if I'm out in public, and then we get recognized, like.
I, she gets a kick out of that, so I kind of get a kick out of it. Well, and my brother and his boys <laughs> recently came out and spent some time with us, and um, we were uh, we went we took him down to the west side. You know, the only time you go to the west side if you live on the east side is when you've got family in town. You don't ever go on there, go over there on your own volition. It's just like, oh, yeah, we got yeah. we got people in town. Let's show them. The, let's show them Los Angeles that we never see. So we went to uh, you talking Santa Monica. We went to Santa Monica. You talking Venice Beach? Uh, we didn't do Venice Beach. Okay. We, we have done Venice Beach with them, but you know, you need that like once a fi- every five years. Yeah. So we were at Third Street Promenade. You know, the outdoor mall situation down there. We go into the Urban Outfitters because you know it's different over there. <laughs> I guess. Just, I mean, it got it just feels different. It's West Side. Uh, no, so we're going through, and then all of a sudden, I realize that there is a dog. Just a, a bulldog, like you, an American bulldog. You, are you about to tell me you got recognized by a bulldog? Yeah, <laughs> well, that because that is a first, man. There's a, an American bulldog. There are cats that watch Good Mythical Morning. I hate to tell you that, but we get lots of screenshots yeah, of I, cats watching our show. You think you get lots of screenshots? Oh, yeah, people yeah. send them to me all the time. But not, I appreciate, not as much dogs. I appreciate the views. I mean, he still <laughs> it still adds to the ad revenue, even if it is a cat. Uh, but the uh, this American bulldog is walking around without a leash in out Urban Outfitters, and I was like, "Is this like? Is this what they do on the West Side? They have like mascots that roam, roam the stores." Please tell me that he spoke English, please. <laughs> and then I hear someone say the dog's name, which I don't remember. Let's just say Spot, which it wasn't. Spot, get, get over here. <coughs> and I look up in the the source of the voice and ostensibly the owner of the dog, Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid? Dennis Quaid. Now, for those of you who don't fully know who Dennis okay, Quaid well, okay, is. Okay, you don't, this is, that's what my story's about. Okay, I, cause, okay. Okay, so, right, Dennis Quaid Cause is. Cause all I was about to say was, I can't answer that exactly, but. Uh, Dennis Quaid, was a very, very, very famous movie star, right? Like back in the in the time of movie stars, like back when if you were in movies in the eighties, it's a big freaking deal, right? Like there, there, there was celebrity culture was way, way smaller. So he kind of comes from that old guard. What's his biggest movie? Oh gosh, can you look that up? But keep going. Um, he's been in a bunch of stuff. He continues to act. He's like in a new. Uh, insurance campaign or whatever, but oh, uh, he had on snakeskin boots first of all, which was impressive. But so my brother obviously g- gets a huge kick out of this because he's a forty-something-year-old man, and so obviously yeah. he knows who Dennis Quaid is, and it, we got a kick out of the fact that Dennis Quaid has a dog off leash in Santa Monica <laughs> in an urban outfit, which seems like the kind of thing that you would feel like you had the right to do if you were Dennis Quaid, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I could do anything, I was a movie star in the 80s, I can walk around with my dog off off its leash. I do have to tell it to come to me over and over again, but the leash would help with that. Hmm. But Cole got a big kick out of it, and then he's literally saying kind of what you were getting at. Cole's like, you know, it's kinda crazy, like, you come in here and you see Dennis Quaid, but you know, like these kids in here, they probably more readily recognize you than Dennis Quaid. They probably don't even know who Dennis Quaid is. <coughs> yeah. At the, literally five seconds later, a group of four teenage girls walks by us and they're saying, that was Dennis Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Really? That's Dennis Quaid. You know why? Because he was in that the movie about the dolphin girl. Parent Trap. He's in Parent Trap? Yeah, he was one of the, it, that was the remake of Parent Trap. Dolphin Girl's course, not Parent Trap. I just saw Jacob held up Parent What's Trap. What's the Dolphin Girl? Where the, the the girl who Free got, Willy? <laughs> not unless her leg was Free Willy. I mean, she got her leg bitten off. By a dolphin? dolphin no, by a shark. <laughs> That's such a mean <laughs> dolphin. <laughs> you mean the girl that lost she, an arm? She lost her arm to a shark. The, uh, soul Surfer or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a dad in that. Yeah. That's how they know her, know him. No dolphins involved. But they know his name and they, you know what I'm saying? Like, that means they, they people watch. And then what about you though? 
Well, I will say that then they did see me and okay. they did they did it's not as good of a story oh, when they when they recognize me, okay, but, but they, they did. did also recognize me. Was that after you asked them if they knew who you were? I did not. Okay. Appro- I did not approach them, and I heard I, they saw me, and then one of the girls was like, "It's crazy, we're seeing everybody in here," or something like that. Like, so. Um. Anyway, that Dennis Quaid man, shout out to Dennis. That's if you want. You want to hang out at the dog park where you don't need a leash. The only appropriate place where the dogs don't need to be on a leash. Hit us up. A lot of people, like I said at the top, when they recognize me, like last night we were walking to meet friends, including you and Jesse, at um, where were we? Highland Park. Yep. Somebody comes around the corner, like, "Hey, man, let me. Can I? I know you. Can I take my take a little video with you?" And I'm like, "Oh, video. Ooh, I, I'm always like, we can just grab a selfie." But I didn't say that. That's interesting because I got the I got a video request. He said this video, week as well. but, and usually they'll ask like, "Can you say so and so to this person?" But instead, he just held it up like a selfie, as if it was a photo but he was doing video and I waved. So yeah. it's like, uh, that's actually never happened before. And then he said, does this happen a lot? And so whenever I'm recognized, I do get that follow up. I do think that, like you said, people wanna know if they're the only one that does this or if they're, maybe I guess if they're, am I being annoying because this has happened five times as you rounded the block? So I guess I'll to answer that question a little bit in the middle. I, I think it's, I, it does happen a lot. And basically every single time I, I go out now, it's, it's multiple times. I mean it's, you know, I, I had to run errands with, with the kids and I went to the grocery store and then the drugstore next door and then we got in the car and drove a block away and went to like this poke bowl place. Mm. I walked in the grocery store and I got, I got recognized. And then I went. I was wa- I was checking out at the at the drugstore, and I got recognized. And then we went to the Poke Bowl place, and the guy working there said something else that I've started to get more frequently, and that is the question: Has anyone ever told you that you look a lot like a guy from the internet? That happens quite a bit. And so what I say to that is. I do get that a lot actually. And the reason why I say that is because like one of my kids is usually with me and I like messing around with people and like making them right. feel feel like. And and Lily was like, Dad, this is not this is not a heist. No, she said that for the other thing. <laughs> for this thing she said, Dad, it is it is him. Don't he, he likes to mess with people. Because when we were, I think I told the story when we were in London at the Harry Potter thing, like these kids were like, excuse me, sir, <laughs> have you ever? Tiny Tim. Have you ever been told all that the, you, you, look like Tiny a, Tim. you look like someone from the internet? I'm like, yes, exactly. I I get it a lot that I look exactly like someone from the internet, exactly. And I kept saying that and they were like, nodded their heads and walked off. Yeah, right. Then they came back later and got pictures because yeah. I was in a confined environment where we were right. all going through a tour together. Yeah. I mean, after it, it, I should just say that like, it's freaking surreal to find yourself walking around and just, and, and it's happening, I don't know, I, I don't know if we're the most popular we've ever been, but it's happening more now than ever. Like it continues to happen more and more. Right. I think it's the nature of, just the popularity of the medium. Like more yeah. and more people are watching. Even if you don't watch our videos, you can't escape our thumbnails. Yeah. And so I think, and that brings me to a theory about something else which I'm sure we'll get into about what you hear people saying a lot, but well, I don't know if we're the most popular we've ever been, but we're the most visible. Definitely. And I guess this, maybe they're the same thing. Well. It, and so it's happening a lot and I just wanna say, I'm extremely grateful because it's an indicator Right. of things working like oh our we we create our stuff to be seen yeah and so when people see it and we get recognized more it's like that's a good sign oh oh this is working it's also freaking surreal because in my innermost being i have a hard time actually thinking of myself as a famous person yeah like i it's like I don't think of myself as an adult either a lot of times. I mean, I know how my brain works. I know 
the thoughts and feelings and processes I go through and I feel like I, I might as well be in fourth grade a lot of times, <laughs> you know? I can attest to that. And in a similar way, I feel like I know what fam- I know who famous people are. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've seen Parent Trap, the <laughs> remake with Dan, Dan, Dennis Quaid. Um, but I just don't feel like I'm one of those people. But you know what? I guess I am because well, I get recognized I, everywhere and I And I think that that's the, there, there's a few dynamics. I mean, one is, um, like you said, it is, it's an indicator. <clears throat> so be grateful. It can be a little bit of a, of a, of a nuisance uh, at times. Now, it, in the moment, I'm never, I, I, I wanna make this clear. In the moment, unless somebody says or does something that is particularly annoying, which we'll get into, I appreciate it and I don't hold it in, there's nothing against an individual who comes up and recognizes me, but it's this, the situ- sometimes going into the situation knowing that it could happen, is just a little, that, that's what's annoying. Not the person who did it, but just the dynamic of the, the fact that it could happen. For instance, uh, we were coming back from someplace and uh, I was like, I'd like to, I'd like to make some burger. I can't remember what it was. I think I was. I wanted to to make some burgers, and I'd like watched a YouTube video about like the perfect skillet burger or whatever. And I was like, I'm gonna make these burgers with this really nice beef or whatever. And Jesse was like, Okay, well, let's. I don't have any of that stuff, so let's just go by the grocery store. And uh, we pull up to the grocery store, and I'm like, ah, Can you? Can you go? She was super tired. She was like, I don't want to go in. If you if you want to cook this stuff, you go in. I was like, I don't want to go in because I just. I really don't wanna be recognized right now. It wasn't like I was having a bad hair day or something. It was just, I was like, I just don't, sometimes I get into the grocery store and well, you I, have, to, I have be, to have multiple interactions. Yeah, but, and, and they, have to, they have to be for that person. You know, every interaction you have is for that person, it's not for you. It's not, you, you, I don't go into the grocery store unless I'm taking someone home with a press, I guess. You know, well, I, don't, I don't go into these places saying I wanna I wanna stop and have interactions. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That are for that person to make them. You sometimes know, you might be in that special. mood, which I want to talk about that. But sometimes you're in the I don't want to get recognized mood because I just want to get in and get out. And I no don't, one would win. I don't because I want the interaction to be something that is positive and memorable to this person because I do care about anyone who watches what we do enough to know who we are. I care about that person, so I don't want to be an asshole. Yeah. To this person, even if I'm feeling uh, particularly like an asshole at the time. Yeah. But um, so Jesse was like, "You're not going to get recognized at the grocery store." Like I, she was just, she was basically trying to manipulate me so I would be the one to go in because like she had her feet up on the dash. Oh, she did. Speaking of dirty dashes, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. I need to call Doctor Noodle to buff <laughs> out those Doc Martin stains. <laughs> but um, so not a, not a not a sponsor. Uh, and I don't know why I felt the need to say what brand of shoes my wife had on at the time. Oh, I uh, thought you were saying Dr. Noodle's not sponsored, but he will be. <laughs> um, so Locke and I go in together. Literally, I walk in to the grocery store and I'm like, where are the, what do you call the things? Carrying things? Baskets. baskets. I was like, where are the baskets at? And a guy's like, oh, right over here. You from Good Mythical Morning? <laughs> it was literally the first guy that we talked to and Locke just got a kick out of it because he was like, mom said you wouldn't get recognized. And then it happened yeah. two more times in the seven minutes that I was getting the three ingredients that I needed. And again, it wasn't, it's not like it was some big inconvenience, but it was just like, again, you feel like all right, if this person has a question, they wanna get, you, I wanna give them the time that this is a one chance that, 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 that and, they, and they wanna have a, a, an interaction that's special or whatever. Right. And so, but I just wanna get burgers and go. But so, but then there's the opposite end of the spectrum, which is I remember one time our friend Gar, um, who we met Tony Hale through. And obviously, Tony at this point is like a huge star and would be recognized basically anywhere that he went. Um, at the time, he was pretty much known for Arrested Development. Yeah. And not. Uh, Veep had not started. Veep had not started yet, and he wasn't like gonna be the freaking main character in the upcoming Toy Story. Um, 
But uh, were you up for that role or something? Why'd you get angry? <laughs> My not, friend got more famous. God, <laughs> I'm not angry. No, um, but in fact, he if anybody should ha- get what he's gotten, it's him. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So, but Gar said, you know, he was joking because Gar has this way of like finding this thing out about you and or assuming something about you in a way that it's just funny, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. So he was like, you know, sometimes Tony, you know, whenever Tony needs a self-confidence boost, he just goes to the Apple store. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're arrested development. Right, because yeah, every, like, the people who work at Apple or and or shop at Apple at the time, Gar's joke was that there was a lot of crossover. Those people were the arrested development crowd and they would recognize him. Now, that he didn't actually go to, to the Apple store. He went to the Apple store to get a product, but, that was that was Gar's like little joke because he was like anytime he's been with him in an Apple Store he's gotten recognized. So you must do this for self confidence boosts. Whenever we want to get a self confidence boost, we go to the meat section in the Ralphs. <laughs> that's right. I don't that's know. where the mythical bees hang out. No, I, I I was making a statement more about us and like our proclivity to eat but, butchered <laughs> refuse. But I will say, so the th- back of the butcher counter. So those the stuff I, they don't put out front. Those are the two dynamics, right? There's the I'm in a situation right now where I'm at the airport and I'm trying to move to a location or I'm in an amusement park and I don't wanna suddenly uh, have to get a picture with somebody because that might lead to this other person wanting a picture and this other person wanting a picture. There are situations like that where it's, it seems like an inconvenience and then there are times where it's just like, you know what, and I, this is never something that you think but it's just like, oh, I'm with these people right now or I'm in this place right now. Right. I'm in this place that I think the people here are particularly cool or something. I have some reason to think that these pe- these people have a particular taste in comedy. Boy, it'd be cool to get recognized here. I, again, this isn't an actual conscious thought process, but this is sort of the emotional undercurrent that is happening from time to time. Because you remember that when we yeah, were- Yeah, there are times when we wanna be recognized, like I'm, I'm in this, co- I'm in Melbourne, Australia, and I think this is the, one of the coolest places I've ever been. And then if I feel like I'm in one of the coolest places I've ever been is somebody with a cool backpack meets me on the the bridge going over the river. Yeah. And I get recognized, even if they don't know that we have a show that night, I can get over that because I'm like, oh, that was a cool backpack. I really, I like that person's taste in backpacks and they like my show. So, hmm, there's a correlation there. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, therefore, I am cool. <laughs> right. Well, you remember, so we were in New York and we were uh, I don't know, somewhere at Lower East Side or something. We're walking along and there are like six to eight guys sitting on this stoop. And the, basically, like, it feels like a television show. Like it's like, this is a scene from a movie. This isn't normal. This isn't like these. It was nighttime and it was a bit seedier. Than, a, than like, this wasn't network TV, this was like, this could be like a scene in an HBO series yeah, yeah. movie. Yeah, like The Wire. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't Baltimore, it was New York. And so you got these guys kinda sitting on this stoop. Not seedy, but gritty. Let's it's say gritty. gritty. Yeah. And uh, some guys who were sort of embodying the grittiness of the area, <laughs> sh- shall we say. <laughs> right. Uh, we were fish out of water, walking by. We walked by. We actually get past them, and all of a sudden, a guy's like, hold up! We might have even sped up, honestly. Red and Link? And I'm like, what? And then a guy who, um, I'm just describing him because this is, he's actually known on the on the internet for this. He calls himself T-Rex. I, th- and I think he has a, uh, I think he's got an, an Instagram. Uh, but he does. He does not have arms. He has hands. He has. He just has hands and no arms. And he he wears this as like a badge of honor. Like he, he didn't have his shirt on. It's like it's his thing. He has fully embraced it. Yeah. And so he comes up to us and he's like, "I'm a big fan." And he's like telling the other guys and like another guy's like, "Yeah, I know who they are." Whatever. And then. I, I, I was blown away, I was like, this interesting combination of the coolest guys who've ever recognized us <laughs> are saying that they know, that they're fans and then and then he explained who he was and like how he, he, like he puts on like a, a T-Rex head and goes around and 
does T Rex motions. <laughs> yeah, it was but wild. That, but it was that, wild. but that was this thing that we talk we talk about that all the time because it was just like those guys watch. Yeah, we're in. Yeah, it's we're in <laughs> we're in each other's orbit. It's weird and because in a cool way. And then, again, I, I know we. I feel like we. I want to constantly apologize for. We're just trying to be honest about the way our thoughts work. It's like I'm not trying to be like, oh, look, at, we get recognized by cool people. I'm trying to explain the psyche of what it does to you and what it could do to us. Uh, I could easily see how this could become something that you sort of rely on like an injection into your arm. But I, you know I would, what I'm saying? So I think a healthier response in, is to, you know, if I'm gonna err on the side of something, it's being over it versus desiring it. And yeah. so I guess I take, I, I guess it's a good sign that like the struggle that we have is being gracious and continuing to be grateful. So being gracious to the person, uh, no matter what they say, if it's awkward or if it's unintentionally insulting. Well, yeah, which that's, a whole a lot. that's a whole category we can get into. That's in a, a whole second. category. But then switching to um, being gracious, like I said, and grateful. So like at, at how we feel about it. And so, we can land there in a, in a few minutes, I think, but and also talk about boundaries because I'm starting to think about that, and I have one story. But before we do, I do think that it, you know, th- there are unintentionally insulting things, and I think we've talked about these before, and, and it's just funny. It's not that we're actually. No, well, not a, I, I don't not, know. Well, maybe th- go through them, and then we'll see. There's if one it's, situation if where it actually hurts, or if it's just kind of funny, and that's why we're talking. Yeah, about. I don't. I've told the story before about the one time I was at the airport, and we were panicking, and we had missed a flight, and somebody came up, and I think I was probably as short as I have ever been with somebody. But, um, but the tip, I would say seven. I don't think I'm ex- exaggerating. Seventy percent of the time, people say one of two things. One is I used to watch you all the time. Right, and the second thing is my fill in the blank cousin, sister, kid, mom, brother is the biggest fan. Somebody besides somebody me. besides the person who's coming up to you. Seventy so seventy, and this is just anecdotal, but seventy percent of the time, somebody says something that it basically says that me currently the one coming up to you, I'm not a fan. I don't care. <laughs> I used to care, or somebody else cares. Right. And so that's so, so I'm bothering you to it, tell you that I'm not I don't, I'm not really into you. Is it like is the worst interpretation? And basically, what I say every time is, if somebody says my so and so is a big fan, I'm like you're not. I th- that's what I say. And then if somebody <laughs> says I used to watch, I'm like why'd you stop? Because that's what I mean. I'm not being I'm not being a jerk. I'm just yeah legitimately like okay. Well, it's a little jerkish. I say if they say I used to watch, I'll say like the guy in the uh, pokeball place. Who like I had to wait for the order, so like, we ended up talking to him for like eight minutes. But the kickoff was I used to watch you. After he said, D- "Has anyone told you you look like a guy from the internet that I used to watch?" I guess it was like <laughs> to put it all together. And I'm like, "Well, we're still doing it, man." And that's when it starts to feel like, "Yeah, we're getting recognized more, but we got all these people who are recognizing us for." Not watching anymore. What does that mean? We're falling off, and like it, it plays into my insecurities, and I'm like, ugh, just that, yeah, you know, and so that's not healthy. But so my conc- well, my first of all, I think if you're talking about like our, uh, you know, our emotional state, this is good. This is good, right? This is good. It's I don't want to be somebody who is constantly like adulated, adulated, and built up by other people because A, it makes me feel a little uncomfortable, but also it turns you into a jerk. I mean like it's very difficult if you are just a normal person, even if you're a normal well-adjusted person who, like this all happened to us after we were fully adults, with kids, married, we got lots of things in our lives that ground us, but even with all those things in place, when you become, if if suddenly everyone is cares about you because of something you did, and they and they want to be around you, or they want, that can create problems. You can become a person that you no one wants to be around. So we're constantly guarding against that. But it helps when seventy percent of the time people recognize you, they're kind of insulting you. Well, it, it kind of it kind of balances things actually, out. Obviously, they're not intentionally insulting us, but, and I think it's an insecurity that leads to it being interpreted as an insult. But it's also a good thing. It's also a positive indicator that like, 
our our work is getting out there. And again, I wanna talk about our work and not talk about us because that's what I want this to be about. It's the stuff that we create even if we're the center yeah, of yeah, the show or whatever. It's a sign that it's getting out there to the point where even if you don't watch it, you know about it. Like It's like people pay millions in, in marketing for just that to happen, awareness, not even enjoyment. Yeah, you know, awareness is arguably just as powerful. You know, it's like I've got an opinion about something that I don't even actively watch. Yeah, you know. Well, and, and I think that's evidenced by the. So you're kind of talking about people who. That's a good sign. I don't aren't familiar, and th- and this is this is something that has happened repeatedly, that demonstrates what you're talking about is definitely the case that people just kind of kind of know. A, they don't know the name of the show. B, they don't know who our names. But the most interesting and funniest thing that has happened is I'll be with someone who is not you, okay? <laughs> this most recently happened with my brother, same trip when he was in town. And somebody came up and they were like, ah, oh, um, you're, you're that guy. You, you're, you're, you're that guy from the internet. And I, and I helped him. I was like, yeah, good mythical morning. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then my brother's with me and they're like, and you're the other guy. And, <laughs> and my brother was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he's so, your brother and that's so the thing that. So we got a picture. Right, what's, why not? The two of us got a picture with this woman. Ironic, what, what's that, that not, happened like five times. Ironically, was I not like a block and a half away and we had just split up to go in different stores at that moment? No, that wasn't okay. that day, it was a different day. Cause that happened then too. No, someone got a picture with you and they, you didn't tell them that I was across the street. Yeah, they, they, they were. me. Yeah, yeah, cause a lot, of, uh, that's, a lot of times people are like, where's Link? And 99% of the time I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't have a geo tag on him or whatever. Right. I have one on you, so I, <laughs> I tell him exactly where you are. That's why you get recognized so much. But people, in that, people are going after you. In that moment, you were literally on the opposite street corner. I was watching it happen. Where's Link? I which, don't know. Which, I, can, I currently see him over your shoulder. <laughs> but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna sick him on you. Sometimes I like to, if people are taking a picture with you, I like to sneak up at the last second and get in the photo kind of like how really famous people do when they're like in the Marvel universe and then they, they show up and sneak into photos. Well, and that, cause you know what you were talking about with, I don't feel, again, I, I watched that documentary about Bill Murray, um, which by the way, isn't, I don't know if I could recommend it because I was kind of annoyed by the, the filmmaker and I just didn't like the way the film was made, but I really like Bill Murray and I really okay. like these stories about people. He shows up. He places. shows up and he does these things and he's built. I, we're not Bill Murray, and I, but I also have this abiding sense that I can't, I could never do that because I'm this guy from the internet. There may be some circles that if I showed up, me and you showed up, it would be a big deal for people. But for the majority of people, there's one person in the group who knows who we are, and then everyone else starts asking. Why do you care? Who are who are those guys? And then people start asking us. Oh, that's the worst. That happened in the coffee shop the other day. We were we were down in Seal Beach where Locke had some basketball games, and he had like a game in the afternoon and then a game at night. So we had all this time to kill. And we're walking around, going to this coffee shop. All these seals to kill. What did you say? Time to kill. Okay, good. At Seal Beach. Okay, better. Did not kill any seals. Didn't even see any. Did you have a club? It's a misnomer. Uh, they show up when you have a club. I uh, go into this coffee shop, and the and the uh, girl working the register is like, "Oh, hey, I, I'm a big fan of your show." And uh, we had a pleasant interaction. That's perfect. And um, then an older woman who was in line behind me, she, she was like, "Well, what do you do?" Oh gosh. This happens quite a bit. I hate having to explain what I do to people who don't actually well, care. Ever since I had a, I, a a few dozen times, I was like, I, I got a show. I got a show on the internet that you know. Well, what do you do on the show? Like that conversation that annoys me. Okay, in all the things that happen with getting recognized, that is the thing that annoys me the most. Is you're making me tell you why someone that j- so what I what I do now, whether it's a a. a a child who recognizes me and the parents are like, why do they, I say. I feel like it's even worse with the parents because they have a relationship with the person who knows us, so that could be an easy right. way to have a conversation. It was worse when I leaned over, I turned to the girl who was waiting on me, 
the, the cash register and I said, she'll tell you all, all about it. <laughs> uh-huh. so, th- so that's what I do now. It's like, what do you do? I said, well, ask her. I, and I, I mean, I know that I'm putting that person in a, a situation, but, and I know that I'm kind of seeming like a complete jerk now that, that I've told you that the way I respond to these things, but it happens, I just have these sort of back pocket responses for people I used to watch, why'd you stop? Hey, hey, may I make a suggestion? I think if you tweak your language a little bit, it could be a little more self-deprecating. Like if instead of saying, well, at, ask her, even with the up at I, the end. I say it nicely. Well, I know you say it nicely, but you could go a step further and you could say something like, I think it would be better hearing it from her. And then it's like, well, what? I think the he's, tone. He's embarrassed to talk about what he does. He must be a porn star. I think the tone of, I, I say, you know then what? Then you got her. I say. Then she's afraid to ask. I say it it's a, a, in a joking way. In all, the other, all those responses. I know, I, I know. So I say, she'll tell you all about it. <laughs> and then it usually just results in no one saying anything else. And I just get my coffee and start drinking it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, don't, I don't like that either. I, when the parent is like asking multiple questions to figure out why the kid likes us. I mean, it's like, you know. Well, and it'd be one thing if it was like, I'm an actor. <laughs> you know, it's like. Right, I right, it's hard to explain. If I tell you I'm a YouTuber, you'll have a question about that. Right. And then if I tell you what I do on YouTube, you'll have a question about that. Right. And then you'll just be like, I don't, why is my child a fan of it, this? It's the same principle as if you do get a selfie with somebody in like an amusement park or a crowded area, like a, a mall or something, then there is a chance that like a little line will form. Which brings me to, I think the biggest sensitivity to this whole thing is being out with our families. Um, you know, because it, it really puts a wrench, you know, I mean, we don't make public plans as a family that involve adding, you know, uh, 10% margin to accommodate for, you know, us being stopped, me being stopped, <clears throat> and then having to separate from me so that they won't be in the photo, or you know, yeah. And then, um, so it, I think it's very it, it really tests their patience, and I fully understand that. Um, or do I? I was at, you know, we we went to the <laughs> Shazam movie premiere, and uh, they they had. It was thrilling. Like we we did Instagram stories. Like I had Shando with me, and like you were in the Ferris wheel uh, with my wife, by the way, right? No, I was with my well, wife. Were you? Your wife and your daughter. I we're guess. in it. We're in the Ferris wheel. Different, different cart. Okay, and she's afraid of heights. So like I wanted to watch her be in that Ferris wheel, but I was. I'm glad you weren't there. It's mm. such a tender moment. Did she have a difficult time? I think she did great. She she over she overcame some sort of Ferris wheel fear. <laughs> They freaking shut down the Hollywood Boulevard and set up a whole carnival. And then the, it was just invite only and um, you know, fortunately we got we got in on that. And we're walking around getting free fair food and all this stuff and then Christy's like, turns to Lily when I'm standing there, she's like, look it's Sterling K. Brown. It, one of the stars of This Is Us, the mm-hmm. show that even mentioning it makes you cry. They both love this show and they bonded over it. And I, I know who the guy is, I haven't watched the show. And of course we had um, the other guy from This Is Us on Good Mythical Morning. Chris. Chris Sullivan, absolutely. Mm. Anyway, Sterling has not been on our show, we had never met him, but when my wife and my daughter are talking about how much of a connection they make with the show and they're like geeking out and like, I actually think that Christy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull her under the bus with me here. I do think she said, oh yeah, maybe, Maybe we could get a picture. He's sitting right there. Uh, he and his son, who um, is like grade schooler, were like enjoying some fair food on a bench, and we were standing there, whispering about him. And I'm like, I just was like, I'll I'll ask him for a photo. And they were like, Oh, oh, okay. And I go up there, and I'm like, Sterling, how you doing? And I I shook his hand. I was like, I'm Link. I'm, I just want to let you know. And boy, as I'm telling this, there's a lot of faux pas here that we've discussed. The first thing I said was, my I, wife. I used and, to be a fan. My wife and daughter are huge fans. Would you mind if I snapped a photo? So again, I was like, I'm I, not a I, fan. I, I feel like, go on, but I feel like that's different. Okay, it, it is. Because they were there. That, yeah, it is different. 
And I'm not annoyed by it. I'm just saying it's just the case that most people say that. And Sterling K. Brown said he no. his his face changed to this apologetic yet kind I can make you cry at will on television face. He said, this is really family time for me and my son. So uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna need to pass. <laughs> or he said, I don't know if he said I'm gonna need to pass, but he said something like as the most gracious way. And I was right. like, hmm, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> and then I walked away like totally, I felt like a total jack for asking him for the photo. And then I turned around and I yelled at Christy and Lily in front of everybody, look what you made me do! <laughs> no, I didn't. I was like, he's having family time. Uh, and I was like, and then it like clicked for them too and they're like, and all three of us, it clicked in our minds, I think at that moment, it's like, wait, I bet, I bet we could have that too. You know, it was like the we, tables. We could have family time? The tables turned where it was like, what if learning from my mentor, Sterling K. Brown, uh, I adopted a similar mantra when it came to, I'm out, I'm out in public but I'm having special time with my, my mm. wife and my kids. This is a difficult one. I don't. I respected him totally I and res I felt. It's, I, I don't, I, don't I, I have no judgment of him. And by, no, the way, by the way. I felt bad for asking him. I felt did like. Did you talk to him the other night at that thing? He did not recognize, we went, to, we went to a party and he was there and we might tell more of the details of that party later so I wanna save it. Okay. Except for the fact that like, I shook his hand and I like looked in his eyes and I was like, is he gonna recognize me as that guy? That, and like, No, I'm he sure didn't. he wouldn't. He did. Now. Even though it was me and Christy there. This is, a, this is interesting because, okay, at that same, at that same Because I wanna thing. talk about these boundaries. That's what I'm getting well, at. Well, because at the same premiere, um, a number of people, I, 10, I don't know, came and, up. And asked to get pictures with us. And got pictures with us. And some people, like one of them was, it was a mom, she came up and she was like, my son is a huge fan and he was there. And she and 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 it turns out he was in the freaking movie. He was one of the kids in the family in Shazam. Yeah, and uh, we uh, and that I think two things are going on. Number one, we don't see ourselves at on the level of Sterling Sterling K. Brown, right? I know right. there are some people who are like, "That's ridiculous." There's no difference between what you do and what. Well, I'm just telling you that I I I see him as a real celebrity, and I see myself as a YouTuber, and. I know that's I'm selling whole platform short by saying that, but just mentally, because anybody can make a YouTube video. Not anybody can just go and say, I'm on an episode of This Is Us. You can make your own show on YouTube just as easily as we can. Um, so it just feels like it's- Or a, can you? It, it's, it feels like there's a, it, there's a different thing going on. Maybe he has experienced, well, if I come to, like, I'm bringing my kid to this thing and if I get a picture with one person, it would lead to a picture with, and all of a sudden, this is about me and not about my son. Yeah. So I completely understand that. But for me, in the, in, when we were at the Shazam premiere, I always feel like we, sh we don't really, we shouldn't be there, imposter syndrome. I'm like, how did we, how do, oh, we're just two guys from North Carolina who just kind of got lucky and, Every, nobody knows that we're just a couple of dumb rednecks and we put with that just know how to put hair product in. And maybe if Sterling <laughs> K. Brown sees us get a picture with somebody, then something will, maybe we can be friends with him. Exactly, <laughs> and so when you're in this mode, I, yeah, I, I, I gotta admit, like it's like, oh, there's other real celebrities here. If somebody wants a picture with me, that, that it, there's that dynamic, and so, but Sterling Brown, K. Brown, is not thinking about it like that. He's not. Tr he isn't trying to impress anybody. Right. And so, I guess when he get you get to this centered, balanced place, you can say things like, "I'm having family time right now, so I'm going to have to pass," and you say that without apology. So, are you now saying that that is what you're going to say when you're with your family? I think I'm going to when I go into certain situations, like if it's if it's a special event that I'm bringing one of my kids to because they are particularly excited about that and it is about, 
hey, I'm bringing you to this thing, we're talking about it and there's a build up to it and then we get there and there's like I'm spending 10% of my time taking photos with people. I think that that sends, it's, it's a missed opportunity to send a message to that child that like you're the priority and this is about you, this is not about me. I think we've just broken down the psychology of what selfies could mean to us in a situation like that. And I think that, so I, I'm not saying across the board but I'm saying I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna try to choose um, going into events like a mindset of um, of doing that. Like especially if it's, if, if there's a, if there's a, if it's an enclosed space where there's lots yeah. of people that could be fans. That's the environment, I think and, the and environment that, is a big deal. If you're so walking, if you're walking down the street. leads to another leads to another. If you're just walking down the street with your family, having family time, and somebody's like, hey, can I get a picture? Like that's a 10 second interaction or whatever. No, if they they if they wanna start talking and they have a bunch of questions, at that point you may be like, I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm, really, I'm with my family now and I'm, people are still gonna think you're a jerk for doing it, just so you know. Because people are gonna be like, why can't he just give me a minute? That's just the way people are. Like you, you are actually took a very mature perspective on the way that you responded to Sterling K. Brown and you're only able to do that because you can relate. But if, if somebody couldn't relate, they would just be like, he's kind of a jerk for doing that. They wouldn't go to the next step and be like, oh, that's sweet that he's doing that for his kid because there's this other dynamics that people don't understand going on. So I do think that the environment is really important. If, if I'm just out in the middle of somewhere where there's, it's not like all of a sudden a crowd could form or somebody else, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, okay, sure, let's do a quick photo or whatever. But I do think that if it's a situation, like amusement parks are the, are the supreme situation because you're there for your family to have a good time and one recognition and one picture leads to more and then it becomes, yeah. Uh, I, I, the first time I went to, to Disneyland with, with my kids, but right when people were starting to recognize this, I ruined their day. It, it ruined their day. Right. And because right. I was trying to be nice, and I'm like, I, oh, I, I, I'm the approachable guy from YouTube. Yeah, of course you can get a picture with me. And that turned into, I've gotta get a hat. I've gotta get a hat and sunglasses. And then I was felt like one of those douches walking around with a hat and, it, it, I'm wearing a hat and sunglasses at Disneyland so you won't recognize Excuse me. Excuse me, sir, can level. I get a picture with you because I've never seen someone so douche-like. <laughs> but like I your douche level is so high. I ruined my family's day. So I, so I do think that you kinda have to evaluate the environment and then you have to have, like I'm sure he said that line, I'm sorry, I'm having family time right now so I'm gonna have to pass, he's, he's worked on that line. Yeah. And may, he's made it as un, you know, di disarming as possible. Sterling K disarmament, that's what I'm gonna be doing from now on. Um, yeah, I think that's helpful, I think, uh, I think that's a good stopping point, you know? Food for thought, I think this has been beneficial for us, I don't know what it's done for you, but thanks for hanging in there. Hopefully it hasn't made you, know you incredibly nervous about, if you see this in public, I don't know what to do now that they talked about it like this. Just be yourself, just be yourself. Uh, be yourself and evaluate the, uh, the, the environment, and we'll be doing the same thing. Yeah, but it's on us to set uh, the boundary, you know, leave that to us. We will crush you. <laughs> no, we won't. You have a rec for us? Oh yeah, uh, as a reward for hanging on so long, give you a recommendation. Um, check baby, check baby, one, two, three, four, rec baby, rec. You know what, I, I'd like to recommend uh, going over and perusing and maybe participating in the Good Mythical Morning and Rhett and Link Reddit threads, subreddits. Mm. Um, in, in the uh, occasional times that I go through there, I'm encouraged about the, the thoughtful exchanges that are happening uh, around uh, our content. Um, so check that out. Um, and then if you want more uh, relational and even deeper interactions with people, uh, other mythical beasts, then of course, I'll, I'll tack on a recommendation for becoming a member of the mythical society. Um, but yeah, I, I like the, 
I'm encouraged by the tone and the the thoughtfulness of the exchanges on Reddit and you might, if you haven't been there, you might be pleasantly surprised in lurking and then joining in. So those two subreddits. So there you have it. Well, thank you for joining us once again. We will be doing the same thing, just slightly different. We'll be talking about something different, but the same two guys sitting at the same table in the same formation. Link's voice may be a little bit different because he won't have a cold anymore. Hashtag Air Biscuits. Let us know what your thoughts are. And don't be afraid to let it shine. If the sun is hiding, then your teeth can make the difference in someone's life. Just smile, a little smile, and brighten the environment. So that's an original, right? We don't have to pay anybody for that. I think that was painfully obvious, yes. <laughs> I went to, you know, I was at I was at lunch yesterday. Are you done now? <clears throat> I'm not done. Oh. And this one, I could tell that I got recognized by someone who's, who was seated with us and then they were seated further down. And me and Chris were on a date and the whole time in the back of my mind, I knew that there was this like, these people who recognized me were, you know, they were fans. Like it was a little more like giddy fan energy. And so like, I've learned to deal with the fact that like, okay, I know I'm being watched right now even though I'm on a date. Yep. It's like, there was a couple of years there where it was like that did a number on me. But I think I'm over that. But. I not, thought this was gonna end with, and I, I went know. and sat with them. We got a picture afterward, like we ended up leaving at the same time and they were they were waiting outside for me to come out. So at least they didn't approach me at the table. So I thought that was a nice boundary. But it was weird, cause it, you know, you ever feel like you've been watched when you're on a date? And it's actually much easier than people realize for you to notice that they've noticed you. And I, you don't even have to even try. though I'm oblivious. Right. So thank goodness I'm oblivious. You notice twice as much as I do. I have a great vantage point. Okay, now we're done. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 